Hello, friends. It's Chop. We got the best seed, folks. Our Our high quality, high IQ genetic stock. Returning to the article. While pronatalism is often associated with religious extremism, the version now trending in this community has more in common with dystopian sci-fi. The Collinses, who identify as secular Calvinists, are particularly drawn to the tenet of predestination which suggests that certain people are chosen to be superior on Earth and that free will is an illusion. I would like you to be predestined into a wood chipper. (laughs) They believe... Okay, I'm sorry. Secular Calvinist. It's so secular. It is theology. It is the (laughs) theology of capitalism. Born when capitalism was born, in the culture of the 17th century, what emerged out of that was a Christianity shorn of any communal obligation, just a pure bullet of selfishness that could then be turned into a logic of domination of the entire fucking world. And eventually yeah, you can't have the mystical part with God anymore because we know too much about science and we need to know too much about science to listen to what the machine wants to tell us. So we can't be bothered with that spiritual bullshit. We're just going to now create a new God out of our own fucking minds and our, and, and our own reflection. And that's what we're going to pr- protect. But it's still theological. It's still a fucking God. I'm sorry. It's not, it's not the product of you doing all the riddling on earth and then looking at the computer long enough. Oh, I figured everything out, which is what these psychos actually believe. Yes. I, 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 I'm, so, I'm so glad that we're beating back woke capitalism. And we can replace <laughs> it with this new thing, which is Christianity without God, which has never existed before. That isn't just what America is. Yeah. And uh, yep. and instead of God, you have um, uh, Bloopy. Elon yeah. Musk. Like, wokeness is a religion. Yeah. Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Wokeness is a religion. This is a fucking religion. You're just, you guys are all just fighting about what to tell the murder bots in our uh, our floating, like, uh, cruise ships with the Morlocks in the fucking uh, steerage and the Eloy up on the Lido deck. That's the question is how are we going to fucking uh, how are we going to dominate these people? And the, the, okay. the only question is what what kind of uh, cultural decals do we put on the murder bots? Do we put a rainbow flag on or a fucking totem cop? That's it. They believe pronatalism is a natural extension of the philosophical movement sweeping tech hubs like Silicon Valley and Austin, Texas. Our conversations frequently return to transhumanism, efforts to merge human and machine capabilities to create superior beings. Long-termism, a philosophy that argues the true cost of human extinction wouldn't be the death of billions today, but the preemptive loss of trillions or more unborn future people. Okay, I want to cue into this part right here now, because this goes back to the Sam, Sam Bankman fried and the effective altruist uh, philosophy that we've been talking about over the last couple episodes. So a big part of effective altruism, if you look into it, is this buzzword long termism. And I think that uh, the author of this piece, I think, just very pithily summed it up. What long term what long termism means is that um, you know, uh, you may think that morality compels you to act upon the pressing issues of today, be it climate catastrophe or global economic inequality. Long-termism would have you believe that that's actually foolish, and there is no greater moral crisis than the eventual extinction of, uh, than the eventual like uh, expanding of the sun and burning of the Earth's surface to a cinder several hundred million years in the future. Or another big problem they think is worth focusing on now is the uh, humanity's domination by Roko's basilisk in so that some AI-dominated future. But, I mean, like, you, you, can see, you can see the sleight of hand here. Because, like, oh, you know, like, normal philosophy would have you believe that, like, your moral, uh, your moral sense as a human being is, is, should be determined by uh, your own life and the things you see with your own eyes and feel and experience and what you know to be true about the world that you live in. No, that's just short-term thinking. What you should be doing is giving um, billionaires even more money so they can save us from the sun burning out a billion years in the future. And in fact, that means that any goal that, that, that like, or any means through which uh, these rich people uh, are trying to save us is justified. And in fact, any effort to limit their power from saving us from AI or the sun burning out is immoral. Isn't it amazing that the uh, two biggest threats are both things where you have to give these people all your money and resources and power? Yeah. That it's AI and the sun blowing up? Yeah, because, the, because this is... Just like the, the Qataris or Elon Musk, it's 
It's all part of the same phenomenon of the wealthy becoming able to detach themselves completely from any structures of, of, of disciplining them, you know, towards any value beyond their specific mind. That's why they all either want to be immortal, literally, like the life extension guys that we're talking about, uh, or they want to have a zillion kids because they think that their genes are going to then be panspermic and recolonize the entire galaxy. Uh, that's it. But it's, it's, this, it's, it's the same as the apocalyptic religious uh, uh, drive. All of it is a fear of death, which is what happens when you have no consciousness of anyone outside yourself. Like nobody else but you is real. And that is how these people live. I mean, it's increasingly how we're all being like bred to live, but because of them being where they are and the lives they live, the disconnection, the, the profound disconnection that defines every moment of their life, they are completely detached. And also, I mean, I, I think another thing that should be underscored about long-termism and effective altruism is that no one, save for maybe this weirdo couple here, but the most prominent proponents of this philosophy don't believe it for a second, contra Matt, Matt Iglesias. I mean, Sam Bankrun Fraud even said as much. Yeah, uh, he's like, hey, yeah, that's uh, all just window dressing. Oh, I, oh, you mean the moral philosophy I was stumping for that basically says I should be allowed to make as much money as possible absent without any guardrails or regulation as quickly as possible so I can save humanity a billion years in the future? Yeah. If, oh, yeah. To, to learn that that was all bullshit and that was just what I was saying to con rubes like fucking Matt Iglesias, Matt Iglesias. And Substack authors. It's so, oh, I love this. This is my, mm. the, the Iglesias it, thinks he's the smartest man on earth. And here he is taking just the the most rube-like, just he looks like a corn pone hillbilly off the fucking turnip <laughs> truck for having this guy go, I'm, I believe in uh, effective altruism. That means uh, very light regulation for the crypto industry. And he's like, look, we have to take this guy seriously. His parents were moral consequentialist philosophers. Because for him, that means something. Like he's willing to go out on a limb for them because that's his job. In, his job isn't just telling people this stuff. His job is believing it. Yep. Yes. That's how yes. he generates yes. these takes is he has to believe it in a way that bank run fraud does not. He can just get yes. zooted and like give this guy a run of bullshit at a bar that means nothing to him. Thinks about a second after he leaves. Iglesias has to hold it in his heart if he wants to keep that fucking DuPont Circle uh, penthouse uh, condominium of him. So he has to get burned. He has to get out. But of course, what does he do? Just uh, basically act like it never happened and delete all his tweets about it. Now, uh, I'm going to go back to being a foreign policy guy now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And you know how we love to compare... Every every billionaire now, whether it's a bank run fraud or a Musk or even a Bezos, uh, to their their predecessors, to J.P. Morgan or John D. Rockefeller, or Andrew Carnegie, um, how you know if any any half witted CEO of any big bank, if they were given the broad charter that FTX was given, they would have quietly made ninety seven billion dollars in yeah. five years, and we never yeah. even know their face. How. Everything, everything now, everything that the, the new class of billionaire does, it is supposed to look like an advancement. Like this is this this goofy, shitty Todd Moranovich eugenics is supposed to look like an advancement, but it's actually they they took out the part of the Jenga tower that was holding it together. Yes, they took they, they, they it's like Elon Musk firing all the non essential people at Twitter. The, <laughs> all the all those all those old guys, John D. Rockefeller, the the stoic Northern Baptist, you know. Why did he not think, oh, why don't I just take God out of religion? Why don't I, why don't I you know, why don't I just make myself God? Yeah. Because, because it, having God in it makes it, makes it sturdy enough to last forever. It yes. makes it so that you, no one storms your castle. Yes. It makes it so that you can build an evil dynasty that lasts forever. Yes. And these fucking dopes are like, wait. But if we take God out and make ourselves God, then we'll go even higher. Why don't we build it? Why do we have to? Why do we? Why, why do we here in Babylon have to go to heaven? Why can't we just build a tower that goes up there? What, what's the problem? Why can't we just do that? Yep. They're trying to get in heaven on earth. And what are they doing while that's happening? Making hell, folks. They're doing yes. it. They're geofying the hell. They're doing geo hell. While they're trying oh to do geo heaven. This is such geo hell. Uh, yep. uh, returning to the article, it says, what these movements all have in common is a fixation on the future. And as that future starts to look more and more apocalyptic to some of the world's wealthiest people, the idea of pronatalism starts to look more heroic. It's a proposition uniquely suited to Silicon Valley's brand of hubris. If humanity is on the brink and they alone can save us, 
then they owe it to society to replicate themselves as many times as possible. The person of this subculture really sees the pathway to immortality as being through having children, Simone said. According to tech industry insiders, this type of rhetoric is spreading at intimate gatherings among some of the most powerful figures in America. It's big here in Austin, the 23andMe co-founder Linda Avey told me. Rafi Grinberg, a pronatalist who is the executive director of Dialogue, said population decline was a common topic among CEOs, elected officials, and other powerful figures who attended the group's off-the-record retreats. In February, the PayPal co-founder Luke Nosick, a close Musk ally, hosted a gathering at his home on Austin's Lake Travis to discuss the end of Western civilization, another common catchphrase in the birth rate discourse. Uh, you want to have 10 kids who all have 10 kids and everyone is just going to obey your word forever. That's how you're going to prevent Western civilization from falling apart. The thing that you started taking apart, that's how you're going to prevent everyone from taking the other tires and putting them on cinder blocks um to quote and, every, great, and all of their jobs are going to be founder right they're all everyone's going to be a founder except for like the few polish people we keep around like breeding rats yeah uh to quote a great man a true great philosopher an eastern mystic an honorary member of the mafia and yakuza <laughs> your family hates you <laughs> But, but really, like, uh, they're not, like, none of these people's kids like them. Oh, God, you really how could you? Previous, previous Eastern moral philosophies would have you believe that the greatest moral good that you can confront evil by, quote, snatching away every motherfucking <laughs> birthday. I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. But no, effective altruism and pronatalism would have you believe you fight evil by, by creating more birthdays. <laughs> billions and billions yeah, yeah. of birthdays. Yeah, they're never going to be snatched away. Yeah, the sun is trying to snatch everyone's birthdays. But if we create enough <laughs> birthdays, we can have birthdays out in the stars. But it, it's like all these people's kids hate them. Do you think when they turn thirty, they're going to be like, "Oh, they name their kid Invictus"? Yeah, how the fuck? How the fuck are you going to hate your parents when they, they saddled you with that fucking lemon? Oh my my shitty par my shitty parents named me fucking Claudia named me Claudius Titus Invictus, even though I'm a girl. Uh, they made me like eat raw liver for the first 19 years of my life. I I can never enjoy anything because of how I was raised. But clock's ticking. I better just pump out 10 kids right now to make them happy. Yeah, it's like and every and the kids. Some of them are going to be founders. Some of them are going to take to their parents' values and they're going to be the good little boys and girls. And the other ones though are going to not be able to hack it in there. But none of them are going to like turn to the good, you know, because their lifestyles won't allow it. They're all just going to become different types of Hunter Biden or Eric Trump or fucking Yair Netanyahu, this new like global fail son class of people who can only fail to live up to like the best pretensions of their parents' values. Yeah. Uh, but like all of this, this disgusting, awful stuff that they, they can, they're pulled towards because they never saw an example in their fucking lives of what actual like moral behavior looks like. So they don't know how to, they can't embody it. That's who they are. It's, it's like these people are want, trying to do eugenics, but of course they are doing dysgenics. <laughs> They're creating the yes. worst versions of rich people there could possibly yes. be. Yes. The least capable yes. of doing anything, but letting well, a machine run everything for them. Idiocracy, if you will. Yeah, and, and okay, okay, well, you know how they took the God out of Christianity? They're taking, the, 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 the way these people love to talk about humanity, about how humanity is special, because according to them, even though this is not true, we're the only species that works together as a species. Wrong. Even though, wrong. <laughs> By the way, wrong. Termites. Completely done. fucking completely fucking wrong. But, you know, if you do accept that is a special thing about humanity, yes, that is a special good thing about humanity in many cases. But you're taking that part out. Yes! <laughs> You're removing, you are removing that you're part. the part that you're saying we hated to spread across the galaxy. The part that we're supposed to hold like a like a dying flame in our cupped hands is the garbage. It's the shit part. It's all the worst, most selfish impulses reified by this machine that does all the dirty work. The reason we don't act that way in our daily lives is because it hurts other people and that makes us feel bad. The machine lets that happen out of yep. our rate, oh out of our God. observation and in another room. And we get to live in a fantasy world. Where we're not responsible for that. That's what. That's why these people can't stop talking about Roko's Basilisk and mm -hmm. the Matrix being real and AI. Because the fantasy isn't that they they build something that's so great but so so awful yep. that they're a genius like Oppenheimer. That's not really the wish. The real wish 
is that the awful machine that runs everyone's life, the problem with it is that they built it. What yeah. they want for the next machine is for a machine to have built it. <laughs> yeah. So there's even less responsibility. Yeah. And so then they get to be just little little babies, little Wally babies in their thing. And the ones the the the, the anti woke people of this class, they think, no, no, the reason I'm based, the reason I love Trump and, and Orban and nationalism is because if we keep that like vigor, we will prevent that from happening. We'll keep heroism. It's like, no, it's already left the building. And Every, everyone who has those values is a fucking lying piece of shit who just wants to stay comfortable. Alexander the Great is not walking through that door. Yeah. Right. By the way, talk about talk about degeneration and yes. th things ain't what they used to be. You're a Hitler. You're Hitler. You're Franco is Orban, the fucking <laughs> the fucking night manager of a restaurant. The night manager of a restaurant, a country of three million people that only gets to have electricity because of EU runoff. That's your fucking Hitler. You fucking loser. You're not even getting out of orbit. <laughs> well, okay, a, a few words on uh, that. That's their that's their Hitler. Well, here's their Albert Einstein. Meanwhile, the Collinses said a mutual friend had been encouraging the, them to fly to Austin to meet with Claire Boucher, the musician known professionally as Grimes who is the mother oh, of two boy. of Musk's okay. children. Okay. Grimes, who follows about four, uh, 1,470 people on Twitter, followed the Collinses while this piece was being reported. It makes sense considering that Musk, who has fathered 10 children, uh, 10 known children with three women, is the tech world's highest profile pronatalist, albeit unofficially. He has been open about his obsession with Genghis Khan, the 13th century Mongol ruler whose DNA can still be traced to a significant portion of the human population. One person who has worked directly with Musk and who spoke on the condition of anonymity for this article recalled Musk expressing his interest as early as 2005 in, quote, populating the world with his offspring. Musk who, has who else wanted to do that? Who can I think of that had a big old farm in, in New Mexico and a <laughs> big old townhouse and an island? Who else wanted that exact thing? Mm-hmm. Uh, makes that photo of Elon and Ghislaine uh, sparkle just a little bit more. And, uh, and and Epstein's claims that he was brought in to advise Tesla. <laughs> uh, Musk has increasingly used his public platform to advocate the cause, tweeting dozens of times in the past two years about the threat of population decline. If the alarming collapse in birth rate continues, civilization will indeed die with a whimper in adult diapers, he tweeted in January. These worries tend to focus on one class of people in particular, which pronatalists use various euphemisms to ex express. In August, Elon's father, Errol Musk, told me that he was worried about low birth rates in what he calls productive nations. The, Collins, the Collinses call it cosmopolitan society. Elon Musk himself has tweeted about the movie Idiocracy, in which the intelligent elite stop procreating, allowing the unintelligent to populate the earth. That's what you're making. That is the world you're making. He would be, if Idiocracy was real, he would be Terry Crews. Yes. <laughs> they would love him. What I mean, do you do? You tweet about Harambe all day. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Uh, shout out, uh, shout out smiling object who, uh, the, the thing he took, he posted about Trump where he was like, haha, my, I'm a big pussy waiting for Trump to fuck me. That was <laughs> yes, great. Yes. Yeah. He was like, I'm a big wet pussy. Trump fill me up. Oh my God. Uh, though, here's where it gets into the real like Nazi shit though. Musk was echoing an argument made by Nick Bostrom, one of the founding fathers of long-termism, who wrote that he worried that de about declining fertility among intellectually talented individuals could lead to the demise of advanced civilized society. Emil P. Torres, a former long-termist philosopher who has become one of the movement's most outspoken critics, puts it more bluntly. The long-termist view itself implies that really, people in rich countries matter more. A source who worked closely with Musk for several years described this thinking as core to the billionaire's pronatalist ideology. He's very serious about the idea that your wealth is directly linked to your IQ, he said. I mean, he is personally disproving that thesis on a daily basis right now. Yeah, but if, you, if you ever wanted any proof that wealth, and especially wealth now, wealth in whatever it is that we're doing now, is just who was holding the potato last, there you go. I says, um, Musk, Musk's ties to the EA and long-termist communities have been gradually revealed in recent months. In September, text logs released as part of Musk's legal battle with Twitter showed conversations between Musk and the prominent long-termist William McCaskill, who works at Oxford's 
Future of Humanity Institute, where Musk is a major donor. In the messages, McCaskill offered to introduce Musk to Sam Bankman Fried, a now disgraced cryptocurrency entrepreneur who had donated millions of dollars to long termist organizations. McCaskill never explicitly endorsed pronatalism, and he declined to be interviewed for this article. He did, however, devote a chapter of his best selling book, What We Owe the Future, to his fear that dwindling birth rates would lead to technological stagnation, which would increase the likelihood of extinction or civilizational collapse. One solution he offered was cloning or genetically optimizing a small subset of the population to have Einstein-level research abilities to compensate for having Googling? people overall. You, you, have, you, just... have a, you have your Google gland is going to get enlarged? <laughs> that, that's their genius idea? Can we, I, can we, how about just giving people health care? How about that? Oh, wait a minute. You mean like uh, increasing the ability of like the collective uh, uh, intellect of the entire human race to be you know uh, connected and allowed to you know, bounce off each other and, and create not die. Uh, like new concepts that could not have been created by a single fucking consciousness or a group of people living in the exact same conditions. The sort of exchange that generates meaningful innovation, you fucking scumbags. Like, I, I got to say, though, like we get accused a lot of black pilled being doomers and whatnot. And I honestly feel like the degree to which that's true is that I think we're all sort of talking around the fact that like the vision these people have of like where society is going to go is going to come to pass. Most likely they're going to get what they want in the near term. They're going to get their walled garden of techno feudalism in however we want to define it. And then we're going to, and people are going to move in it or fall into the, the, the excluded zone outside the, the fences, the walls. Yes. Well, I mean, there's still going to be people in there who are going to be working more and more exploited, but they're going to stay exploited or get spit out like over time. And, that's probably going to happen, but I I don't I can't call that doomerism for the same reason that I think these guys' understanding of like uh, the idea of humanity as such dying out as like bad is like a thing we have to stop. Uh, it comes from the same premise that humanity will exist in the wire, but that's the opposite. The humanity is going to be extinguished inside the wire, but humanity will actually be saved outside of the wire. There's still going to be people living. They're not going to be living in lives that are going to be legible to people like us because of what we expect out of the social contract and how deeply we're wedded to it, even beyond thought. But like those lives are going to be human fucking lives and people are going to live and try to live. And out of necessity, they're going to come together. They have to because the, they're because they can't turn a machine on and let it do all the fucking work. Yeah, no, I, I feel, yeah, I feel the opposite of doomerism, even though, if you just listen to this or just listen to like our John Candy in the metaverse episode or any of that. <laughs> uh, listen, are you maybe I, feeling I, I, despair? But no, I really do feel the opposite um, because a seeing how chintzy and shitty their plans are. Oh God. Seeing, seeing how <laughs> little, seeing how little thought they have put into it, seeing how unimpressive these people are like, okay, look, if trade unionists were willing to go up against an actual impressive, terrifying guy like John D. Rockefeller, yes. we should not be afraid of these people. Will right. they succeed in the short term? Of course they will. People like this always do. But their plans are so fragile and so shitty and so fucking dumb. And we are so obviously at the end of something. And every move this they is, make hastens the collapse of the thing they're trying to keep. They're trying to protect. They're digging, all, literally right. digging their own graves every moment because, oh, we got to save humanity at the year 10 billion. Meanwhile, you're making the very thing that allows you to fantasize that you're going to keep your sperm around that long. Falling out below you. Look at Bankman fraud is the perfect example of that. 